Well, usually this time of year, I'm the purveyor of bad news, but this year it's all good news. I've just been to six, seven apiaries, all alive. I cannot believe I've got a few dead outs that were dead last autumn, obviously, that I didn't clear out, that I just put the mouse guards up. But this apiary, for example, every single one alive. So <laughs> if we have a big crop this year, it's going to be massive if everything works out well. But really, really pleased. It's, it's taken a long time and a lot of investment last year after the Asian Hornet the year before 2022 to recover in 2023 to come out of the winter with everything right. I know there'll be some that go between now and then and I'm not counting my uh, chickens before the eggs have hatched, as we say. But it's looking pretty good. I'm really pleased. So instantly this colony is, when I opened it, was much smaller. And uh, I'll show you inside. This is a laying worker now. I don't know how long it's been, but there's still quite a few bees there amongst the drones. So what I'm gonna do is we've got time on our side now. <laughs> we've got all season. So I'm gonna give this colony, so they're grumpy as well. I'm gonna give this colony a frame of brood from this one, because I think these can easily give it up. But this has still got two partitions in one and two so this is way over too strong so look at that they've all built drone in the feeder but in other words that's what the feeder's for they will have a super next week now i don't want this drone comb to be wasted but that bit will be wasted because i'll have to cut it out okay so some people like have been a bit like asking questions like well why do you put your feeders on top because it gives them that bit of time in the early spring if i don't get to them like now so they can build above it if they need to most of the time the feed is the other way around so they'll build in it and it's easy to take off and there's less to clear there which is the best scenario but last autumn i didn't get all of that done and the feeders were upside down but it doesn't matter they've all survived really well every single one of these as i said before except that one there has done i'm going to find the same in everything but i'm here to sort it now i can get into the apiary it's dried out in a week um they're chewing the uh Way away through the partition. This is another frame from that colony. I've just taken this drone comb out and that will go back to be melted down, to be honest. But I can boost this colony with a frame every time I'm here because there's plenty of resources here all around to get that to make a new queen eventually. It might not make a new queen for two or three goes, but if it makes it in the third go in about three weeks, that's fine because I'll have plenty of young nurse bees there that have replaced though that that kind of feeling they've got to lay eggs that will switch that off because they'll be brewed in the colony and then they'll make a queen cell themselves and that will be good but by that time we'll have a few hopefully a few drones flying around there is drones flying around that anyway so um hopefully everything will be good all going really well here just finished that one so all of these except uh one there is a dead out no bees in it whatsoever those bees are from the colony next door just settled on that same spot with a brush on that one there is the one with the stone on the roof that one there is the drone layer or laying worker it's definitely not a drone layer by the way it's actually a laying worker and this is one i just wanted to show you just to give you some idea what to look for First of all, we're seeing loads of bees, so I know they're going to be pretty busy, and I know they're all about the same. But when you open a hive up and you see bees in the top feeder, if you're using a feeder, that's always an indication that there's no room or not much room underneath. So we'll just lift this off gently. If I didn't lose my hive tool. So we'll lift this off and I'll just show you. I know straight away that's pretty busy underneath. And also when you crack the hive, when you crack that board open, and it, it comes away gently, that's what you know you're gonna see. So what can we tell from this? Obviously it's pretty full. They're building on top of the frames where they can. But I also point something out you can see here, and that is instantly I saw 
nectar here. Now you can actually see nectar in the top of the cells there. So I'm gonna take this partition out anyway, that's gonna give a bit more room, but I'm probably gonna remove a frame of honey from the far side because I can and I can use it some other time later on just to give these guys room for a week or so until I get back with the supers. Because the forecast for next week is pretty piss poor. And as I said the other day, the most important thing is you remember that you've got to look at the forecast this time of year and not do anything crazy. It was only three or four years ago we had snow this time of year. Didn't last long, but it's enough to chill brood that's um, on the edge of the brood nest. That is a bit, you know, the colony starts to shrink down a bit because it starts to use its resources. And they can, when you've got a colony this big, that's the other thing to remember. The more they grow, the more they can consume really quickly. So you've got to bear that in mind and don't take risks. Don't isolate brood. Don't put frames in between brood. Find out where the brood nest starts and finishes. So I imagine it's probably like there. We'll look in a minute, but I'm going to take out this. This is the early management I do. I will obviously remove my partitions. There's only one in this colony. All of these have got only one because you might remember I was here with Chris Campbell in October because we actually, well, in November, actually, we actually removed the treatments that seem to obviously you can see they work really well. And in the place of it, we put um, one partition and some comb because they'd drawn up, so we had double boxes on these, and they'd drawn up loads of foundation. And that's what I'm, I'm not using now. I was thought I'd have to use it, but I've been, I've been kind of lucky that they don't need extra feed. In fact, I'm having to take frames out. But because of that, what we did then, there's only one partition in, which is fine. So it's given the colonies a little bit more room initially, but they're already full. So I know that the broodness is probably going to go from like there to there or thereabouts. We'll have a look in a minute and we'll, 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 we'll explain that. But you cannot separate or do checkerboarding and all that stuff this time of year. It's just way too early because you are risking everything in that colony. Um, so someone asking me how often I change my combs. And to be honest, most of the time I change my combs. Um, they're self-changing because I make nukes. And I remove combs from when I have dead outs. I melt colonies down. Um, the person asking the question said they'd seen a few darker combs amongst my... There's the queen, by the way, if you didn't spot her. Someone was asking, and they said there was a few darker combs amongst my colonies. Um, well, of course there is. And the news is... There is no actual proof that darker combs hold disease. And you can look it up if you want, but everybody says we feel it's better to change those combs and rejuvenate that wax. Because normally in the wild, colonies would swarm, some of the nests would die, some of the colonies wouldn't be re-inhabited, they'd be eaten out by wax moth. So wax generally gets changed over and that's what we as beekeepers try to do but sometimes we can have colonies that are basically queen right for a long time and unless we change that wax ourselves we can end up with some quite dark combs now also to point out that person who asked the question those combs i've got they are no way near as dark as some of the combs i've seen on extremely successful beekeepers you know so all I say is don't get too paranoid about it because everyone can go, you've got to change your combs, you've got to change your combs, you've got to keep this, reg you know, do shook swarms. I never have to do shook swarms and I don't believe in it. But if you're not regulating your combs, it might be something you need to do for yourself for the, for the colony to keep that change of comb going. Okay, the other thing to mention about old combs is that they don't actually become very efficient. Because if you look at an old comb, you'll see that like some of the wax has formed over two cells. Um, they've got more drone in perhaps than we want. Um, there's so many imperfections in an old frame that actually it is better to have freshly drawn comb in terms of being able to raise a lot of brood quickly. That's why we have colonies and boxes, I believe, because it's an efficient way so we can raise brood quickly and we can check it and it allows us to do different manipulations easily and having good clean combs is one of those things. Now, as I said before, there's no actual proof that having older combs increases your chances of disease. It just means to me that the frame isn't as efficient as it used to be. And it's a good idea probably to change things. 
we all tend to believe what we hear people muttering and it's not necessarily the truth about beekeeping. Obviously, in terms of European fire brood, American fire brood, you don't want to keep anything that's contaminated with spores from no two. You need to be scrupulous. That's why I clean my gear all the time. My point is, there's a lot that people say that isn't necessarily true. And it's like, you know, the truth is out there, but you've got to make sure you find the right, um, right truth out there. So getting back to this colony, that's where the brood nest starts there on this side. That's where the brood nest starts there. So one, two, three, four, five, six frames of brood and bees putting honey into store. I mean, this is a really old cranky old frame, but it's still got some brood on as well and pollen and everything. So I'm gonna to have to um, put this in back in the colony. I don't wanna lose this brood, but it's a bit of an odd shaped frame and I'll probably rotate it next time. It's got drone in it as well, that side. It's actually got a queen cell in it there that I need to have a look at, but I think that's an old one. That kind of thing. One of them odd ones, but I'll look at that in a minute. This side, I'm taking this frame out. I'll shake the bees off this and get them to build a new one on that spot and it will give them a bit of work to do because that's filled and nearly all full of nectar. But I'll use that in the nukes. So it just gives you some idea of how I'm kind of managing my hives at the moment. In a week's time, this will all change and I won't be removing frames. I'll be just putting on supers and briefly looking at the brood nest, hopefully every six to 10 days to try and make sure that I've not got any queen cells coming. And if I have, then I'll probably just make a nuke with that colony and take the queen out. Two frames have actually a little bit drawn up. You can see the, the edges have been sewn in last year, but this will give this colony something to work on. They'll depressure, it'll depressurize it for a few days while they build those combs out. And I'll come back next week and there'll be the most beautiful white combs built there. Even if they don't get any more flight and if it rains tomorrow, there is a front coming in, you see, to change all this to colder weather, which I talked about at the beginning of the week. So with that in mind, getting in to put supers on isn't urgent urgent but i don't want to leave this any longer i want the bees to feel they've got space and with a colony this big it doesn't matter if they have a bit of space extra because what it means is they will be looking and starting to clean out comb and looking to expand their nest still even if it's pissing the rain so that is something to bear in mind i, I find that's what works for me it might just be my area but i find that once you get this initial growth they just don't stop no matter what. So you've just got to hope you get a bit of shit weather for a while just to calm things down and then buy you a little bit of time if you're behind. And we're always behind. I've got to the point now where I don't do demarres. I don't do things like artificial swarms because to me that takes too much power out of the colony. Demarres I don't do because I haven't got enough brood boxes to put a second floor on and the amount of equipment I'd need to do that for the Dayton is absolutely enormous. So I just go on the fact my swarm control consists of regular inspection and if I find closed queen cells and the queen's still there, I take her out and I put her in a nuke because it's the easiest thing to do. Then you've got your queen and you just cut out as many queen cells as you can, leaving one. And often you'll see me going through the hedge because I've cut all the queen cells out and realized there was none more in the other part of the colony. All good. That was uh, just a little look at what I'm doing. Later next week, we'll, we'll be doing supers. I've got a few to clean up at home as well. I've got to get on with the rest of these, get these done, but we, I'm so pleased just to be able to get in here because that's like a mud bath if it rains. I've got in here, it's dry, I've not churned it up and I can come back next time and I'll probably have to cut the grass already in here like I have done the other place. You see how quickly it's uh, getting away. But look at this passage of bees, still masses flying, all really good, lovely colonies here. And it's Friday, the weekend. But hey, you're a beekeeper. You don't have the weekend off. Get to work. Catch you later. Bye for now.